Are England in danger of wasting the talent that is Sam Curran? Do you, uh, do you know, there was a couple of years ago, I think it was around 2011, 2012, where Emma Stoney played four tests in England and then four tests in Australia. And he, at the end of every test match, he gave the same press conference where he was like, can someone just find me a seam bowling all-rounder? And I was like, I think there's other issues in this team because there's a lot going on here. Um, plus, he should have run out Ian Bell um, at Trent Bridge, but that's a whole different thing. But the point being is... Spirit cricket. It's a really, really <laughs> important role in cricket to find someone who's a seam bowling all-rounder. And Sam Curran's now been around for a long time, and I don't know what his position with it, within the England setup is at the moment, right? Well, it's out of the England setup now. He, he's not okay, been who, named no. in the test squad to go to Pakistan. Who backs him more? The Punjab owners yeah. or England? Yeah, Punjab, absolutely. Yeah. Punjab would give him any job. I'm pretty sure he's like he's got property over there now. Like you know, he's got, <laughs> he's got a fast food chain of like Karens. He can get burgers or something over there. Like he's so he's so Punjab like focused. And in England, you're just like yeah, and we've got Sam Curran. Yeah. No, I, I think the issue with Sam Curran is because he's so versatile. He can open the bad middle order, finish games with a bad bowl, wherever you want him to bowl. And the fact that when he's playing so much of franchise cricket, he's moving from one franchise cricket to the other and his role's moving as well. Mm. So when he's playing in the CPL, he's a new ball bowler. He finishes with the ball and he's batting middle order. He comes to, let's say, the IPL. He's only bowling during the middle overs mm. and he's batting at number four. So he's playing seven, eight different franchise mm. cricket and everywhere his role's different. So that's the flip side of being somebody who's as versatile as he yeah. is. But the problem with him then becomes is he does not really know who he is. What's his strength? He can do all of this. He's master of all of this, but he's not, he's sorry, good at all of this, but not really master of one position or one thing that he does. Does he have one skill yeah. that is international quality, right? And you go through it and you're like, Maybe in the old days when he swung it a bit more, yeah. but he's one of these guys that has started bowling the wobble ball and doesn't swing it as much anymore, right? Yeah. And, and so he doesn't have, at the moment, one skill that you'd go, he's an international cricketer because of that, and then we can use him in all these other ways. He's more, oh, we can, you know, he can, yeah. as, I mean... He, he, can fits into a, he fits into everything, he, right? He, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, like... and there's no major skill. And I think from a franchise point of view, that's almost perfect, mm. yeah. right? Yeah. But I think from an England point of view, they need him to be good at one specific yeah. thing. And they've already got, I mean, you know, up until recently, they had Liam Livingston and Moen Ali. You know, they've got a few guys who can do yeah. lots of different things. They kind of just need him to be one thing. And especially with the ball. Do you remember when Carlos Brathwaite came through and he played that innings and everyone got really excited? And I was like, yeah, guys, but Carlos Brathwaite is going to have to play as a bowler. Right? Mm. He's going to have to be really good as a bowler. And where is he good at bowling in these sides? Mm. Every 10 innings, I think he can do that with the bat. Yeah. But the other nine innings, he has to be decent or reliable with the ball. And, and you, you see those sorts of cricketers a lot. And with Sam Curran, it's like he can do everything. As he said, you know, uh, um, you know, jack of all trades. But I'm not sure right at the moment if he has one skill that you would pick to be an international skill. Whereas mm. Mark Wood bowls really fast. That's his, yeah. that's his one skill. So he, it makes more sense. So... He just doesn't fit perfectly um, in the side. And also, he's really good at all those things. But like when he batted up the order for Punjab, it was like, mm. he's a, kind of like a, an, an anchor is not going to make as many runs as someone else. Mm. When he takes the new ball, you think he's really good, but he's not as... When does he bowl after the new ball? Like all those yeah. sorts of things. It's, it's just, it doesn't quite... It's almost like the idea of Sam Curran is better than the actuality. But the thing I would say about him is, if you look at all-rounders, they usually develop later. Right, so Daniel Vittori becomes an all-rounder in his late 20s. Imran Khan becomes a great all-rounder in his late 20s. Ravi Jadeja, all, he made all those first-class runs, but internationally it took him a long time because they don't work on individual skills as much. But the, the issue with Sam Curran then is, you, you took those names, but the amount of cricket they've played as vis-a-vis yeah. -vis Sam Curran. Yeah. Different types of and, and in specialist and roles. Specialist roles. So, yeah. like I said, he still hasn't... The, the most important challenge for a particular player is to know your game, mm. what you can do and your boundaries and things that you can't do. That's where maturity comes in because with maturity you know, okay, I can't play this shot, but if the situation arises, what, what's my plan B? Yeah. So the issue with Sam Curran, even though he'll, he'll become better or you know, he'll get more experience, but he's not maturing in, like you said, in one particular area. If I, if I get cornered, what's my plan B? 
Yeah. Because he hasn't spent enough time being cornered. So, he, you know, he's cornered in a position. Okay, so the next franchise, like, you know what? He didn't have a good season. I didn't have the last tournament he was opening. Well, let's let, let him bat at four. He can bat at four as well. Mm. So he hasn't spent enough time opening to figure out, okay, this hasn't worked. I haven't done well against a particular kind of bowler. Yeah. What's my plan B? He just moves on to the next thing. So even though with age and maturity and all, I don't know whether he's spending enough time doing that one particular thing enough. Does he need to play Red Bull cricket, do you think? Does he, does he need to identify where he wants to be in, say, 18 months' time? When he came into cricket, you couldn't move for people saying, you know, that this guy's going to be a number six for England. Yeah, I mean, yeah. against India, right. was player of the series. Yeah. That, I mean, got runs. I mean, the difference was Chris Wokes and him. I mean, yeah. 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 So, anyway, so it was quite... I thought he was going to just go f from strength to strength after that. I but think again, we all did. Yeah. I, and now you find yeah. yourself in a situation where he's not even... I don't think he's in the T20 squad for England. Yeah. I think he's just playing in the white ball. In the, well, and, uh, and, and he has had moments of like, he, he was the MVP of the, or the player of this tournament of the T20 World Cup in That's Australia. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then went back to the IPL and got smashed everywhere, like not long after that. Like it, where, where is his, in India, how to, where's his ranking? Give us uh, comparable players. I mean, you can both answer that question. Uh, but. I don't think there is too many of his kind. Because mm. as like you said, as a franchise, I would love to have someone like Sam Kun because he, he fits in like a dream. You okay? So you picked a team. Suddenly you see, you know, the openers not doing well. Sam, open. Yeah. Suddenly you, 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 your middle order. You bought someone. He's not scoring runs. He's not looking in form. Get him. So he can do a lot of those things. So as a franchise, he is an absolute dream to have. And he's, he's a good leader. He leads the side well. He's got a good understanding and he's a fighter as well. Yeah. So he's got everything that you need as far as a franchise career is concerned. Even T20 to a great extent. He fits into a lot of those roles. But in red ball cricket, and that's where I think if he wants to, again, it boils down to him how much, I mean, how serious he's about his red ball career. But you've got to play red ball cricket then. Because... The idea is not bowl four overs, spell, I mean, in two spells. Mm -hmm. The idea is to bowl six overs, seven overs, and, and be consistent with it. Bowl three overs in a spell. One of the biggest challenge for, if, you're, if you haven't played test match cricket or red ball cricket for a while, is just to stand for 90 overs. Mm -hmm. Forget bowling and batting, just to stand for 90 overs right through the day when you might not have to do a lot. Mm -hmm. That itself is taxing. So... I mean, he can, can he do it? I think he can. I mean, he still has those skill sets. But does he want to? I guess it was not to him what he wants to do. It's also, I remember when he played in the West Indies and Mike Selby, I think, wrote an article or sent out a tweet saying that England didn't know the best way to use him. And you think- So of, this is 2019. Yeah, we I, would there. Say, I would say- So he opened serious. the bowling he and opened, Stuart Broad was dropped. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and what Selby was basically saying is that he's not a good enough new ball bowler to move on Mm -hmm. any of your other new ball bowlers, which I think is probably fair, right? But the problem with Sam Curran is if you don't give him the new ball, you yeah. then ask him to bowl in the middle, which is fine when it's a Duke's ball and it's swinging around, but the rest of the world, he's not really that yeah. useful. So he's not, and again, it's, it's that same thing. So how does he work as a test player, right? It, maybe he has a Mitch Marsh jump at one stage, and Mitch Marsh was maybe the most um, ridiculed player in Australian cricket for a long period of time. He had the lowest batting average of any number six in Test cricket history. No one mentions that much anymore, right? But again, Australia was trying to push an all-rounder who wasn't really emotionally, in Mitch Marsh's case, physically, obviously, you know, a, a little bit different, but he wasn't really emotionally to, to be able to do anything. And then Mitch Marsh has become this incredible number six. Well, Sam Curran probably isn't a good enough batter to average over 35 batting at number six in test cricket, right? Do you think he could be if he played Red Bull cricket? So he played no. a couple of seasons. I don't think he could so ever look, average over 35 in test cricket at, number, mind, at number six. No, I, let, let me put it this bearing way. Bearing in mind, Ollie Pope still doesn't average 35. Yeah, it's, that's what I mean, it's hard. So, but, but let me put it this way. If, if he's serious about his Red Bull cricket, right? So what happens is, okay, so he's averaging, whatever he's averaging is like, you know what, I need to get to late 30s. Hmm. Then you would need to work accordingly. Yeah. Okay, I want yeah. to be a new ball bowler. So what do I need? Okay, I need to get strength up or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But if he's not serious, that serious about his red ball cricket, what he's going to do is he's not going to spend that kind of time, mm. those hours. What he, he will go play franchise cricket, where, again, demands are very different. 
So it boils down to how much of time and effort he's ready to invest into red ball cricket. If he wants to, I think that he can get better at red ball cricket. He can do the stuff that he wants to, but then does he want to? Bottom line is that. Is he ready to spend those number of hours and, and, and energy and time into it? I, so I think the, the best, let's say he just spent all those hours. Yeah. Best case scenario is he could probably bat at number seven and average high 20s, low 30s and occasionally come in and smash it. I think he has that within him. And then he becomes a Chaminda Vass like bowler, right? Mm. Not at the level of Chaminda Vass. You say that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> not at the level of Chaminda we'll Vass. That. <laughs> but you say, you say, okay, you're going to have to, but we, we need you to take wickets with a new ball and we need you to swing it and cause problems. But you're only going to bowl for maybe four or five overs and we yank you out of the attack. But when you come back in, you can't get hit for any runs, mm. right? And you have to be very smart with how you, maybe you come around the wicket and you bowl cutters or whatever it is. You keep the pressure on mm. and you do that. He needs three different spells that are going to be important in a test match day and, and around the world, not just in England, mm -hmm. in order for him to be a number seven bat, right? Because he's not good enough to bat at number six. If he's good enough to bat at number six and really be a good number six, you know, that Freddie sort of level, mm -hmm. then it's completely different. Then his bowling is a bonus at that point mm -hmm. and you use it when you need to use it. Oh, it's swinging, great. That, mm -hmm. Today's the day the sand bowls. But if he bats at number seven, he's going to have to be, uh, a, uh, you know, a top, a top class bowler. Mm -hmm. But just to quickly add to that, I, if if you ask me, is he good enough to bat at number six? Naturally, talent and yeah. everything, all of that. I think yes, he's good enough to bat at five as well. Five six is, I think, is good enough. But again, boils down to whether he wants to put in the work. On AM, on DAB, via the Talksport app, and on your smart speaker, Talksport.